G'day mates, my name's Nick, I live in Australia, and a warm welcome to my YouTube channel, CPAP Reviews, a channel for those who can't sleep or breathe good. ResMed shares are in the doghouse overnight, and they've been in the doghouse for a couple of years, let's be honest, and it's all because of this. Dark days for the industry indeed. Lily's weight loss drug reduces sleep apnea severity in late stage trials by Reuters. April 18th, 2024, and here's the drug, Zepbound to Zepatide injection. Now, in case you've been living under a rock for the past couple of years, I can hardly blame you. Gone are the days of sweating it out on the treadmill, eating like a rabbit if you wanna lose weight. Those days are gone. Welcome to the age of the GLP-1 receptor agonists. Who can be bothered with all that? Sounds like an awful lot of work. Much easier to just jab yourself in the leg, watch the pounds just fall off. And what's scary is this is just the beginning. Five years time, and away you go. Anyway, that's what's scaring all these stock analysts. That's why the ResMed share price is in the doghouse. Everybody is worried about weight loss and sleep apnea because the two are very much correlated. All right, let's take a look here. Ilo Lilly said on Wednesday, its weight loss drug helped reduce episodes of irregular breathing associated with a common sleep-related disorder, sleep apnea, in two late-stage trials, paving the way for expanding use of the drug. <laughs> I love that. That's textbook pharma 101. Create a drug, for example, diabetic drug, and then see what happens. Oh, these people with diabetes are also losing weight. Why don't we see if we can get it approved for weight loss? Oh, hang on. What other conditions are associated with obesity? Everything. Well, why don't we just target sleep apnea? Why don't we target stroke? Why don't we target heart disease? And that's exactly what they're doing. And to be honest, these drugs are wonder drugs. Yes, you'll see a whole lot of YouTube videos talking about side effects and a whole bunch range of other things. I have a couple of doctor mates who are just in awe of these drugs and their potential. A couple of them work with indigenous communities and they are just absolutely mind blown. The drug cut the frequency of irregular breathing episodes by as much as 63% across the two studies. The trial results add to a growing body of clinical evidence that suggests popular GLP-1 drugs such as Lily's Zepbound and Nova Nordisk's Ogovi and Ozempic have medical benefits beyond diabetes and weight loss. They're spreading the web far and wide. The US Food and Drug Administration approved Ogovi last month for lowering the risk of stroke and heart attack, like I've just said, in overweight or obese adults who do not have diabetes. Wow. In the first study, patients who received tazepatide showed a 55% reduction in the frequency of irregular breathing episodes. Patients in the second study, which tested the drug in combination with continuous positive airway pressure, PAP therapy, experienced an average 62.8% drop in events of irregular breathing. That seems really low to me. Normally when you put someone on pap therapy, it's like 90% and above. This is the gold standard right here, guys. Works like a charm. So that figure there seems very low, especially if they're using it in combination with the drug, the drug and pap therapy. So we don't have the full results from this study yet, but I can't wait to just tear the thing apart. It's going to be a lot of fun. The data could boost Lily's chance of insurance coverage under US government-backed Medicare plans for seniors, Wall Street analysts said. Obstructive sleep apnea, which is characterized by brief interruptions in breathing during sleep, affects roughly 1 billion people globally, probably an underestimation, according to a 2019 study. That will be much higher now. There are currently no drugs approved to treat the disease. Over a billion people globally, an untapped market. Big Pharma is licking its lips. They can't wait to get their grubby little mitts all over my little baby. Mm. Sleep apnea, the industry, it's a cash cow. Those are not my words. Those are the words of Peter Farrell, the founder of ResMed. That's what he calls it. It's all funded by insurance, government, 
cash cow. And you can imagine there's a race on right now between these big pharma companies to develop the first sleep apnea drug, be first to market, and the first to market will no doubt make $1 million. Resmed's continuous pap therapy devices are among those approved by the FDA. Shares of the company declined 6% to $174. Resmed reports, might be its third quarter, I can't remember, I lose track, in a week or so. And old mate Sexy Mick will be dreading that call. They'll probably smash it out of the ballpark, they generally do. Um, But he'll be dreading that call for one reason, because none of the analysts will ask him any questions about the financial performance of ResMed. All they'll ask him about is this stupid study. He'll be hating it. He'll be like, come on, guys, give me a bloody question about the company, for God's sake. So in the coming years, there will undoubtedly be a weight loss revolution. It is happening. So we'll end up with a whole bunch of people with sleep apnea who are using CPAP machines who will start to lose weight. They might not get off the CPAP machines, but their pressure requirements, their settings will need to change. And I want to show you this right now because those familiar with the channel will know that I've been monitoring this situation for a while now. And I've done a few interviews with some people and I'm monitoring one of my mates, Todd Wackford over in the States. And I want to show you his data quickly. So when Todd first started Using Wagovi, he was 289 pounds, and he's now down here at 234 pounds, and this is a weight reduction of 19%. So this is a really good example, because as we saw from that study, the average weight loss was 20%. Let's take a look at his results here. Now, he has been able to reduce his pressure requirements from around 18 centimeters to control his sleep apnea, maintain stable, regular breathing, down to 10. So he's been able to reduce his pressure significantly, maintain stable oxygen levels. However, I wanna show you this because it's quite funny. And also for those of you who will be losing weight in the near future, when you hit your goal, 20%, 30%, whatever it is, you'll ask yourself the question, do I still need to wear this bloody mask every night? I've lost so much weight. Do I really need my CPAP machine? And yes, you can go and do a sleep study, but they're a pain in the ass. Much more fun checking out your data on Sleep HQ. So we'll zoom in on the breathing trace. This is data coming from the CPAP machine. But Todd also wears a Sleep HQ O2 ring, so we get the blood oxygen data. And he's also got down here his sleep stage data coming from Apple Health, which is pretty cool. All right, let's zoom in and have a look. So to start, I'll show you what good stable breathing looks like. Here it is. So I just click and zoom, then you got. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. Nice, regular, consistent breathing. I'll zoom forward here a bit for you. It's nice, that's what we wanna see. And because of this, stands the reason we have good blood oxygen levels. Nice and stable here at 96, Mickey Mouse. Now I'm just gonna zoom out, click the R, and we'll move forward to this section here. Okay, (laughs) so you can see breathing, 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 and then all of a sudden breathing stops. No, Todd is not dead. (laughs) He's taken off his CPAP mask. But the good news is we still have the blood oxygen data coming from his O2 ring. So we can now compare his blood oxygen with CPAP therapy versus without. Let's do that. Okay, so not too bad, 95 Uh Uh-oh, here we go. (laughs) Didn't take long. Look at this. Before it was a nice flat line, look at it now. 92. 91. 90. All right, let's see if it goes any lower. Here we go. What are we here? 89. But just look at the change there. Right, so when you see this pattern, this roller coaster pattern, sleep apnea right there. If we come down the bottom here, Have a look at the pulse rate. This is really cool to see too. So you can see here, pulse is quite steady here. His heart pumping away. He takes off his mask at this point where we have no data. So the pulse rate is also coming from his ring. Look at, you can see it. See this? All of a sudden the heart just jumps up. Boom, 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 boom. Because less oxygen in the blood. Got to circulate more blood around the body. That's why so many people with sleep apnea die from a heart attack 
because their heart never gets a chance to rest. During the night, it's working harder than during the day. Right, this is what we want. He puts his mask back on here. You can see the data starts coming through. As soon as he puts his mask back on, look at the heart rate. How good is that to see? This is what you want, a nice, beautiful, steady decline. So instead of being up here at 96, down she comes, down she comes. Nah, nice and resting, beautiful, 69, down here, 67. Lovely. Thanks for watching, mates. Until next time, sleep well, make every moment count. And to old mate Toddy, keep shredding those pounds, mate. Let's get to 30%. See you soon. Cheers. This video is sponsored by Sleep HQ. Upload, review, and share your detailed CPAP reports with anyone from anywhere. Visit sleephq.com and join our free community today.